Timo is making some big claims in his latest ad. Like a is that so? Sounds like a challenge. I hope you're ready to put your money where your mouth is, Timu, because I'm about to put your promise to the test and see if I can live the billionaire lifestyle on a Timu budget. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Style Theory, the show that dropships the Internet's most stylish fashion content straight to your subfeed. Now, I may not be the world's biggest sports fan, but even I can't escape the Super Bowl commercials. This year, the one that made me stop and pay attention was none other than Timu. And not because they ran it not one, not two, but six times during the entire show. And that is not cheap. No, what got me was their tagline. Shop like a billionaire. On Timu? Really? No tea, no shade. But when I think of Timu, I don't tend to think of luck. Luxury. Timu is an e-commerce platform where you can buy just about anything, from clothes and furniture to jewelry and toys. What sets Timu apart from other online retailers is that Timu's prices are super low, like comically low, even when you compare it to the king of affordable options, Amazon. But do cheap prices actually mean you can shop like a billionaire? Well, Timu seems to think so, but I'm not so sure. So today, I'm going to take them at their word and see if Timu can rise up to its own challenge. Can you really live the lifestyles of the rich and the famous using only Timu? Or is Timu trying to pull the bargain bin wool over your eyes? And since I'm rebuilding my new billionaire lifestyle from the ground up, it only makes sense to start from scratch somewhere new, somewhere empty, somewhere like this. Allow me to introduce you to the Timu Zone, a world built entirely out of items found on Timu. From our clothes to our furniture to some things a little bit more extravagant, we are going to rebuild our entire life right here from the ground up to become the billionaire that Timu thinks we can be. But before we can fill this space with my brand new life, I need to find out what billionaires actually shop for. And it turns out that information is really easy to find. Like, really easy. Billionaires, they love talking about, posting about, and getting interviewed about all their very expensive stuff. Honestly, I'm shocked. But we can actually distill all of that fluff into three easy categories for our test. Dress, design, and drive. The three Ds, if you will. Over and over again, we see the super rich indulge in things like clothes, often designer or custom made homes meticulously decked out in the creme de la creme of interior design, and of course, cars. I don't know why, but there seems to be something with billionaires and having the desire to amass a crazy car collection. Maybe I'm just overcompensating, I mean, overcomplicating things. Either way, this feels like a pretty good framework to test Timu's big claims. So I've devised a three round shopping gauntlet. In each round, I'm going to pick a real life billionaire and try to emulate their clothes, their furniture, or yes, even their car using only items we can buy on Timu. Yes, you heard me right. Right, we are going to attempt to buy a car on Timu. Stay tuned to see how that turns out. Now, obviously, Timu's campaign isn't actually about spending a billion dollars, though I'm sure they'd be happy if you did, but rather it's about feeling like a billionaire. So when we're judging how well Timu lives up to its slogan, I want to compare the Timu cost against the original item cost to see what we're actually saving. And with all that out of the way, it's time to start round one of our gauntlet. So let's see if Timu can really turn this pauper into a princess. Clothes can often be the ultimate status symbol, and not just for the 1%. In high school, having the right brand name could mean fitting in with your peers or being considered an outsider. Though, like we learned in our Quiet Luxury episode, the really wealthy don't rely on logos to make a statement. They let the clothes talk for themselves. Take Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, for example. Don't let that casual jean and t-shirt look fool you. It's made by Italian designer Brunello Cuccinelli, and it costs about $300. Still, I actually think Timu has the upper hand in this category. While it sells a wide variety of items, the majority of Timu's site is dedicated to clothes, shoes, and accessories. But to put it to the test, I needed to pick my first person to copy, one with a lot of style. Yes, we are once again getting Swifty here on the channel. If you didn't know, Taylor joined the Billionaires Club at the end of last year. Between her massively successful Eras tour, her re-recordings, her record-setting fourth album of the year Grammy, and winning Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Taylor fits the definition of a billionaire to a T. And I may be going to the Eras tour again later this year. Yes, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. But I figured why not use this as an opportunity to find my next costume for that concert. So today I'm going to try and emulate two of Taylor's most iconic looks. The first being this gold dress from the fearless set of her heiress tour. This look features a couture mini dress from designer Roberto Cavalli, who actually designed several of Taylor's outfits on the tour. This dress alone is estimated to cost around $12,500. Add in the custom knee high glitter boots
quotes from Christian Louboutin for a modest $5,995, and this look in total will cost us over $18,000, which is way out of my budget. And so let's see if Timu can save the day and give us the same look for less. And here's outfit number one. Do you recognize it? Because this is the fearless look from the Eras Tour. Now, that is actually one of my favorite ones because it is iconic with Taylor Swift. The swivel, the gold, the lame, it's perfect until you get to the back. Now, here, here's the thing. When I saw this outfit, I thought it was a full outfit, but um, they they kind of forgot to put the back in place, and so we're gonna we're gonna stay here. We're we're not gonna move. We're not gonna go back there because that's a demonetization zone, including you, Camera B. I see you over here. Hey hey, eyes up here. So is this outfit a win? Well. It's a little mixed. I think that this would stand up to going to an Eras Tour concert, standing there for three hours, going crazy watching Taylor do her thing on the stage. I don't think the boots would. The thing about these boots is they are really poor quality. It does feel like sticking my feet into a vat of foam. And I don't know if you know what foam is. It's a bit like foam if it was wet. But here's the other thing, and it's the thing that really makes these boots a big loss for me. They smell, they smell so bad. I feel like I am getting chemical poisoning as I stand here for the five minutes it takes me to tell you about this outfit. So in lieu of that, we are going to jump to our second outfit to see if we can do a Grammy award winning look with Timu. I can still feel the smell in my throat. While what we ended up with definitely nailed the spirit of the original look, at least from the front, I may never recover from the damage those toxic boots did to my lungs. That being said, we did get what we paid for. On Timu, the dress only cost $22.99, and those awful boots were actually more expensive at $28.39. So in total, our Eras Tour outfit cost $51.38, less than a quarter of a percent of Taylor's original look. And in terms of success, I'd call it a half win. It had its upsides, but it felt less billionaire and a little more party city. As I try to forget those boot bioweapons, it's time to move on to Taylor outfit number two. And let me tell you, I have really high hopes for this one. We are going to try and replicate the outfit she wore to this year's Grammys. Now, real talk, trying to assemble this outfit on Timu was no easy task. Not only is there so much going on with this look, but a lot of it was custom made. That means if we want to try and match all of this on Timu, we are going to have to do a lot of searching. And this is going to be a problem because Timu's search bar? Ugh. Not great. The main problem is that the more specific of an item I was trying to find, the less Timu's search feature was able to serve me what I needed. If I needed just any white dress, Timu had me covered. But if I needed to find a specific kind of dress, like say one with a square neckline and high slit, that's where things started to fall apart. In fact, it ended up being easier to go to Google, type in what I wanted, add Timu to the end of it, and then Google would show me exactly the right items on Timu's website. So Timu had the right stuff. Their website just made it very difficult to find, even for an experienced online shopper like myself. But back to the outfit. The highlight was obviously the custom-made Scaparelli haute couture gown by designer Daniel Roseberry. Being one of a kind, finding the exact price was a little tricky, but I did end up coming up with a rough estimate. The average price for an award show dress in 2022 was about the six-figure range, which is about the same price as a higher-end haute couture dress. So we can safely estimate that the bare minimum cost of this dress would be around $100,000. Taylor complimented the dress with some black opera gloves. While I couldn't find the exact price, similar pairs cost around $207. She paired that with a pair of stiletto slingback sandals from Giuseppe Zanotti, costing a cool $750. She's actually worn that same pair of shoes to several other big events. We stan an outfit repeater, but the part of this outfit that got the most attention? The jewels. Taylor Swift has a longtime partnership with the jeweler Lorraine Schwartz. According to Schwartz, Taylor was wearing over 300 carats worth of diamonds to this year's Grammy. Again, since most of these items were custom, finding the exact price is a little difficult. But considering that at last year's Grammys, she wore 136 carats of Schwartz jewelry that reportedly cost about $3 million, I'd estimate that this jewelry tops out at around $7 million. So what about our Timu option? All right, outfit number two. This is Taylor's 2024 Grammy dress. I'm going to start right away with the thing I hate most, which are these shoes. These shoes are going to make me break an ankle. I don't know if it's the fact that the sizing chart was off or the fact that these straps are not strapping. I don't like them. We're going to take them off. I, I We're kicking the shoes off. This is a 
shoeless game. Yes, once again, the shoes were a complete and total loss. Honestly, I was more than a little disappointed. When ordering each item, I went through each size guide meticulously to make sure I was ordering the right size. And yet both shoes were way too big. And then we got to the dress. Here's the thing about this dress. While it does look a lot like Taylor's dress, it does not feel what I expect her dress felt like. First off, this dress is not meant to actually close. You see, there's this clip back here. Usually it closes because it's meant to hold up the dress and make it not, you know, slide. However, this one was probably an inch too wide. It took not just one person, but about three people to really slam close that dress. Let's not just talk about the pains of beauty. What about the quality of this dress? It's surprisingly a thick fabric, and I think it actually gets the spirit of Taylor's dress really well. This neckline is a almost perfect match for the dress she was wearing, and that was a hard sell. Shopping all over that site, you could find so many other white dresses, but none that got this sharp, very angular top. So that in and of itself, huge win. Though there was one big problem with the fit. Where Taylor had a corset in the back that really let her dress hug her body tight, this one wants to escape my body the fastest that it can. But hey, it had the slit, sort of. Sure, we don't have a slit, but we have the idea of a slit down here. It has the right kind of thought process. So of course, that is a huge success. Good job, Timu. You gave me enough options to find this outfit. But that brings me to the rest of this outfit, the necklaces and the gloves. The gloves are fine. They are gloving their life up. But the necklaces, I don't know how they look to you, but when I saw them, I could tell right away that they were a little um, less than Claire's quality. They are very flimsy. They're very light. They are definitely costume jewelry and that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with costume jewelry. I own a ton myself, but I feel like these are, you know, more like a five-year-old's costume jewelry than a year old's costume jewelry that, you know, wants to last for a little while. However, if you want to dress like a billionaire for your birthday, for Halloween, Timu probably has your back. Overall, with this round, I'm just a little bit disappointed. Timu, I really thought this was gonna be your time to shine. This was your moment and you just kind of let me down, but you have another chance. We are going to build a living room out of Timu furniture, not just any living room though. We are going to build a Kim Kardashian worthy living room out of Timu. I think it's fair to say that for round one, Timu gets a thumbs down from me. Not only did I not feel like I was shopping like a billionaire, I barely felt like I was shopping for a Halloween costume. And I love shopping for Halloween costumes. Ultimately, everything felt cheap because it was cheap. All of the jewelry combined cost just $9. And those shoes I could barely stand in cost $10.79. I think if we learned anything here, it's that paying even a tiny bit more for decent shoes is worth its weight in gold. Adding in the cost of the gloves and the cost of the dress, the total for this outfit comes in at just $70.89, which when you compare it to the multi-million dollar price tag of Taylor's version is truly a bargain, but at what cost? By the way, before we wrap up this round, I want to give a shout out to Sarah Chappelle, who runs the Taylor Swift styled Instagram and blog. Both were super helpful in trying to track down everything Taylor was wearing. Speaking of tracking, if you're spending a lot of time shopping online, you'll want to do it with the support of our sponsor for today's episode, Incognit. When you're browsing online, whether it's shopping for new clothes or just checking on the latest updates from your favorite creators, your data is at risk. Tell me if this has ever happened to you. In researching for this episode, I spent hours looking up information on high-end living room furniture. Now, weeks later, I am still getting ads for couches, carpets, and cream-colored curtains. Oh my! And this isn't the first time. You would not believe the ads I got after the edible underwear episode. You, uh, you don't want to know. By making an account, I was able to see who had my data. And on my own, I never know how to get started on getting it removed, which is what makes Incogni so great. It would take years to do this myself, from getting into contact with each company, writing letters, rinse, repeat. With Incogni's dashboard feature, it only takes about a week to start seeing results. Incogni saves me the hassle of dealing with the complicated legal back and forth of getting my information removed. And as someone new to having their whole life being online, having someone out there looking out for my personal information is a huge chip off my shoulder. And they're giving all of 
of you style theorists a special deal. When you go to incogni.com slash style theory and use code style theory at checkout, you will get 60% off an annual plan. That is a huge deal you don't want to miss. Go to incogni.com slash style theory or click the link at the top of the description and use code style theory to take control of your information today for a great price. Once again, that's incogni.com slash style theory with code style theory at checkout for 60% off the annual plan. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this episode. Now that we've tested the clothes, it's time to move on to our next round, creating a home or at least a room. We have to have somewhere to live, right? And when I realized this was going to be part of the test, there was one haunting room that came to mind. Kim Kardashian's unsettling beige sitting room. I'm not here to yuck someone's yum, but I feel like Norman Bates would be right at home in this place. But she's not alone in this love for simple beige aesthetics. Carrie Washington, Serena Williams, Dakota Johnson, and even Alicia Keys have all embraced that minimalist off-white interior. Huh, maybe I shouldn't knock the beige life until I try it for myself. So what do we need to build our own team move version? Kim Kardashian's sitting room was inspired by interior designer Axel Vervoud, who is basically the king of minimalist design. The main seating in this room come from the chairs and the couch, which appear to be from the polar bear set by designer Jean Royer. Since his death in 1981, the value of Royer's work has only skyrocketed, priced more like an art piece you'd find in a museum rather than Bob's discount furniture. A few years ago, the polar bear couch and chairs sold at auction for a crisp $1 million, so that's likely close to what Kim Kardashian paid for her set as well. Speaking of art, that little piece hanging in the background is by another famous and deceased artist named Lucio Fontana. And a few years ago, a similar piece by Fontana sold for $1.5 million. Now, something you might not realize about Kim K is that she's very sentimental, at least when it comes to her family. One of her prized possessions are the baby books she made for each of her four kids. I was able to find a similar set of three custom books for about $371. So doing a little math, that would mean that a set of four would cost around $495. Making up the rest of the room, we have this wooden coffee table and this beige carpet. While I couldn't find out who made these exact items, looking at similar designs from other brands that we know Kim K shops, I can estimate that the total cost for the rest of the room is about $19,700. This brings our estimated cost of the entire room to just over $2.5 million. I guess minimalism comes with a maximalist price tag, unless you're taking the Timu challenge. Now, it's time to show you how I transformed the Timu zone into a space worthy of a Kardashian. Welcome to my living room, brought to us by Timu though definitely not sponsored, which means I can be as honest as I want. Let's take a look around and see how we did. Follow me this way. This is our main seating area. We have two armchairs, so we went hardcore extravagant on this one. So we found these. Now, it turns out that on Timu, most chairs that you find there are either foldable or inflatable. If you can't tell, they're a little bit inflatable, but we did find some lovely seat covers that gave us that beige look we were going for if you just ignore the gaps and they actually feel really comfortable. However, we did originally have that one set up over here and it immediately developed a hole. So we're just gonna move on from this into our gallery. This is my Timu original because I originally bought it on Timu. In all honesty, it is a really pretty print. I love the gold, the white. It really fits the beige of the whole room. I think I could find this in a lot of high-end designer galleries like Target, Walmart, even something like Ikea. It did come with some dents to add texture and realism. Makes me feel like someone really went to work printing this out on a, um, yes, it is actually canvas. But let me take you to the best part of this entire living room. I call it my memory nook, where I can relive all of my greatest memories, including this one and this one. And let's never forget this moment. Okay, let's be real. This is the world of Instagram. No one prints out their photos anymore. Follow me down to the ground because I really need to show you this table. Theorists, this table turned everything around for me. This table might be the best thing we have bought in this entire episode. This baby, it is smooth, it is sturdy, and it solves a problem I've had for so long. Where do I hold my snacks on movie night? I can put everything on this table. It's the perfect height, it is the perfect width, and honestly, Jason, can I keep this table? All right, guys, this whole section, a full success. But um, you stay here. I'm gonna go have a break until the next part. No, stay, 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 stay. Leave me alone. 
this is my time. Maybe it was the high amount of chemical fumes I've been exposed to, but that table, I wasn't kidding when I said it was a solid piece of furniture. And at just over $41, it was one of the pricier items we'd purchased so far. And honestly, that money, worth it. That's right, Timu. So far, the best option we got from your store wasn't the cheap option, and it gave us quality. Looking around at the rest of the room, I would say it was worthy of a college dorm. Not quite the billionaire paradise I was hoping to get, but our room did have a few other highlights. The photo album, costing just $13.95, which was a pretty average price for that kind of album, and the rug, which was truly a steal. It was soft, cushioned, and sure, it came with that same kind of chemical smell, though not nearly as much as the boots, but for $38, the quality was surprisingly good. Personally, I've been shopping around for rugs recently, and they are pricey, costing upwards of $50 minimum for a rug half this size, and they're not always better quality either. So in my book, Timu actually took a triple W for this round with these items. In total, our full Kardashian sitting room furnished by Timu cost us $276.62, less than 1% of that original price tag. And I can't ignore the big question we've all been thinking since the start of this episode. Why is everything cheaper on Timu? It all comes down to the core of Timu's business model. Like Amazon, Etsy, and Shein, Timu is what's known as a dropshipping company, meaning that things like my Timu original art isn't made by Timu at all. It's just the middleman. Timu is a marketplace that tries to connect manufacturers directly with their customers. When you place an order on Timu, all they do is simply pass along your information to the manufacturer, and that's who makes and ships each item directly to you, which helps keep that price sitting at that sweet, sweet low number. Here it is on Amazon for $159. It's got the same pictures and everything. You are paying that high price because now you are buying from a seller instead of a manufacturer, and that seller wants wants to make a profit on their purchase. But that's not the only thing keeping Timu at the bottom of the bargain bin. According to some experts, Timu is taking a $30 loss on every single order. Yeah, they are driving their costs down so low that they are losing money. So why spend even more money on six, seven million dollar Super Bowl ads? It's simple. They want to be the number one shopping destination in the US. And this year, the Super Bowl brought in a record setting 120. 3.7 million viewers. And here's the thing. Post Bowl, Timu was the number one free app on both the Apple and Google Play stores. However, it was a temporary success and it's since dropped out of that top spot. But theorists, we have one more round where Timu can prove that it's worth more than anyone ever bargained for. Transportation. Lamborghini, Maserati, Bugatti, nothing says classic rich person quite like a luxury sports car. And if we're going big, I don't see a reason to not get one of the most sought after cars there is. Introducing the Ferrari La Ferrari, which is Italian for um the Ferrari. It's a very creative name. That's right. We are going to buy a Ferrari on Timu. This car was only made in a limited run of 499 units between 2013 and 2016. It was the first full hybrid vehicle Ferrari ever made, allowing its electric motor to put out more power than any other on the road. Celebrities who are known to own this rare car include people like Gordon Ramsay, Justin Bieber, and Drake. Although technically speaking, none of those guys are billionaires, but we do have some proper billionaires who do have that car as well, including NASCAR owner Rick Hendrick. And since this car isn't made anymore, when one does go up for sale, it tends to fetch a pretty penny, anywhere from $3 million to $6.7 million. So imagine my surprise when I found one listed on Timu for a fraction of a fraction of that price. I had to get it. This was going to change the game. And theorists, I felt like a billion dollars that day because they even had a drive who brought the car right to me. I don't know what I was expecting. Okay, I have to admit something. Timu was never going to ship me a car. It was never gonna ship me a couch. In fact, it was never going to ship me anything larger than your average coffee table. And there's one big reason for that, shipping. Companies like Timu take advantage of a loophole in our import laws known as the de minimis exemption. Now this law does a lot. It allows imported shipments valued at less than $800 to avoid paying some import duties and be subject to less inspection by customs and border protection. Meaning that Timu 
has to keep its goods as cheap as possible to stay under that value limit and keep them small. According to a congressional subcommittee that looked into the labor practices of these fast fashion brands, 30% of all packages that enter the U.S. using the de minimis exemption come from just two companies. Can you guess who they are? It's Timu and Shein. And on top of that, almost 50% of all de minimis exemption goods come from China, where labor costs are significantly cheaper. And it gets worse because this law, it was meant to help small businesses be able to acquire materials they need from abroad without having to deal with excessive fees and delays. But here comes big brands like Timu and Shein taking advantage of this loophole meant for small creators so they can continue to send their cheap goods into the US for even cheaper. Not cool, guys. Not cool. And so Timu is jumping through hoops to try to sell us on the idea that we can live large on their small scale goods. Well, we have clearly proved the ad wrong. Despite finding a few great items Jason is going to have to pry from my cold, dead hands, Timu failed each and every one of our challenges. But it turns out that Timu, they lost long before we ever made this episode. You see, their Shop Like a Billionaire campaign was built on a premise that was inherently flawed. While we, like Timu, tend to think of billionaires spending their money on things like fancy cars, clothes, and homes, that's not where they really spend their money. Billionaires spend the vast majority majority of their money making more money. According to the author of The Billion Dollar Secret, people think billionaires sit on mountains of money and don't do anything but invent new ways of spending it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Keeping $1 billion in cash would cause up to $135,000 in opportunity costs each and every day. Simply having all that money costs money. And the only way to offset those costs is to make more money. They do this by buying things like stocks, real estate, bonds, and other other businesses. Things that help their money make money. Think succession. And all of those things are things you can't buy on Timu. Now, I'm not saying that the uber rich aren't spending their money on retail therapy like the rest of us, but it's about relative cost. For a billionaire, buying something like a $6 million car is the equivalent of the median American buying an iPhone. Kim Kardashian could buy a million dollar polar bear furniture set every day for the next two years before she stopped being a billionaire. It would take Elon Musk five. 175 years of daily polar bear purchases to spend his entire net worth. But here's the thing. I'm not going to end this episode by just saying, wow, billionaires are so rich they can buy all the luxury goods they ever imagined and still be rich. Instead, I want to leave you with some practical advice I learned while researching for this episode. Advice that will actually make you feel like a billionaire. According to online experts, if you really want to start building your wealth, the first thing you need to do is create an emergency fund. Because even if your budget and expenses are perfectly in balance for now, unexpected things can happen. You could lose your job, you could get an unexpected medical bill, or your perfectly good 2008 Nissan could get T-boned in an intersection, forcing you to buy a new car out of nowhere when you were just trying to get to work. I may be speaking from experience there. Experts recommend that you start building a three to six month emergency fund, and it can start with as little as a dollar a month depending on your situation. Over time, all that change will really start to add up, and then you can get someone else to help that money make you some more money. No, I don't mean going to Reddit to get your advice on the best stonks. I mean putting your money into a managed broker account. Let someone who knows more about money than you make money for you. That way, you'll truly be living the billionaire a lifestyle of passive income. The point is that while Timu may save you money on some small knickknacks, it's not going to make you feel or shop like a billionaire. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep shopping smart. And hey, if you want to see some bloopers from this episode, head over to the Style Theory TikTok. Yeah, we have a TikTok now. I've been having a lot of fun over there. And so if you haven't followed us, you are seriously missing out. Just saying. In fact, I'm going to go head over there right now and post something. See you there. <laughs>